Today I've got a Seat. This has an engine light on and I've been asked to look at it. Comes back after driving a few miles. It's got the BMS diesel engine. And I checked the fault codes used in the launch and I have an intake manifold runner position. This doesn't have an intake manifold runner position but it does have an intake valve. So what I'm doing is going through all the pins at the intake manifold valve with the power probe one at a time to see what I have, what voltage I have at each pin can make sense of what's going on and why it's not working, why it's not happy. So there I've got the 5 volt supply. Next one along 4.3, 4.2 so that'll be the signal. Then I've got a ground so that's the 3 for the position sensor side of this valve and the last two are showing as a ground also, so they are the motor with the ignition on. Now this one I'm not interested in, this is the DPF pressure sensor, but it's just so that you can see what I was doing, just slide in the pin in each one, one at a time, because you can really see what I was doing with the throttle valve, but you get the idea, I was just going through the pins one at a time, and I'm going to see why it's not happy with it figure out what I've got to look at. Okay. This intake valve is not closing on its own when you switch the engine off. It's supposed to close for a couple of seconds and it's not. So I'm using the activation test on the launch to see if it's going to do it. I'm looking at the voltage and the signal and it is changing when I activate it with the launch. It's just not doing this itself. But this is computer controlled from the engine ECU, so why is it not doing it when you switch the card off, but it can do it with a launch scan tool? I'm not sure what's going on here. I might put the Pico scope on it and get a better look and see if there's anything I can see with that, with more than one channel at a time. Here I've got the, the red is going pulsed on and off from battery voltage to ground all the time and the blue channel is ground all the time and you can see further over that the blue channel switches to being powered all the time so it doesn't have a fixed power or a fixed ground on the blue channel that's one of the wires going to the motor the green channel that you see is the um, position sensor. So when that's dropping down from being 4 volts is open to like half a volt when it's closed, the polarity of the blue one switches from 12 volts all the time to 0 volts all the time, and then we get the pulsing again once it's moved to where it wants to be. It's strange how it does it. One side's pulsing all the time, and the other side it's the polarity that changes. This is just how this intake valve seems to work. This still hasn't let me figure out what's wrong with this, though. I'm just trying to get an understanding of what's going on. Okay, so it's working with the scan tool, but it's not working when you switch the card off. So I decided to look inside, see what's going on. And the black gear here, the plastic gear, some of the teeth in some of the places are missing. I don't know why that would make it so it doesn't shut when you switch the card off. You see right there, the teeth are missing. But it's doing it with the scan tool, so I don't know if it's a command from the ECU that's faulty, but certainly this isn't going to help, so we're going to put one of these on anyway, and I need to look a bit more into it. This throttle valve here is uh, the intake valve on a diesel. When you stop the car, it should fully close and then open again, and it wasn't doing it. And one thing now, after having another look at it again, I decided to unplug it here at the connector. And without the connector on, I went into the throttle body with a power probe and powered it up. And I could get that to fully close. And the only way I could get it to close was with the wires in the way that I've got them. So the power would be in where the blue back pin is. And the ground would be where the black one is. That was 
when these were unturned and I'm using the power probe that is the only way I could get it to close however that way what I had the problem was it was nothing was happening it was staying open the whole time and what we've noticed with this when I put the voltmeter on it was showing negative voltage negative 12 volts instead of positive when you switch the engine off so when you switch the engine off it should close that but it wasn't it was actually if anything it's trying to open it more by taking the polarity the wrong way around so what I've done to fix this one I'll show you here these wires here I've just cut them for now to try this and I've switched the red with the blue and the red with the violet and I've cross them over and now it's working the right way around so I don't know how it's happened but at some point those two wires are the wrong way around and I'll show you it working now there's that one I'll start the car and there's the voltage it's now closing now we're going to check the voltage here. I'm going to change it to um, a graph to let you see it. So we'll bring the five, five volts. One second. Five volts and five milliseconds just to start it with a time. Five volts, five milliseconds. Now I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll start the car. In this case, that's plus because zero's in the middle. But before when I was doing it, the voltage was actually all this crossing over up and down. It was at the bottom because it was negative voltage. So that's why I saw the wrong way down. Now it's the right way around. It's all positive. See that's changing there as it's opening and shutting the valve. I'll show you one more time with the valve. And off. And then it opens again once the car's stopped. And that's to help the car shut off. It stops giving it air. So it was a complicated one. It did have two faults. This was faulty. The gears were faulty inside. And the EGR wasn't working properly either. That wasn't moving so it got a new EGR. But that was mad to think those wires needed changed over. I didn't expect that. It was an interesting one. I've just got to join the wires together properly now that are down here. Um, in the cross uh, crossed over directions so that it's going to work. And clear the fault code. Thanks for watching.